worship experience causes us to have an encounter with God that will impact our lives for the better. So let's listen to a word from the Lord and be blessed. Amen. We greet you in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We give reverence to the almighty, all wise and all knowing God. Honor to his son and to all my father's children. It is good to be here this Sunday morning again. Amen. Let me give you something that 11 o'clock won't get. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to lift up chapter 11 and verse 28. When you find it, let me know by saying amen. If you're still looking, let me know by saying wait on me. And as we turn to that, continue to pray for those who are not with us, our sick and our shut in, who are, again, Reverend Wallace still needs your prayers, Sister Virginia Jackson, uh, Sister Grooms, and, and so many others. Um, but keep them lifted. Amen. But let's hear from God this morning. Paul tells the church at Corinth, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Is that not what your Bible says? Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, from the aid of your prayers, for a few minutes of your time, I want to talk about look inward. Amen. Take your seats and pray with me for just a little while. Eternal God and our Father, our Lord and our Savior, it is preaching time now. And as always, Father, we need the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Master, first and foremost, I pray that Terrence Grooms decrease and that Jesus Christ might increase and that your name might be magnified. Your people might be edified and in the end, some soul might be saved. Father, I pray that you again take me to that secret place where I can do your bidding and your will. Use me as a conduit of your word that your word will flow freely. Cleanse me from the innermost parts of my soul to the outermost parts of my being that I might be able to articulate your truth correctly and with power and tenacity. Bless your people, Lord, that your word will fall on fertile ground, that believers are made stronger and non-believers come into the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Finally, Holy Spirit, I pray that you rebuke the adversary, that progressive will be more productive in 2022 than we were in 2021. This is my prayer in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Look inward. It is our mantra. For the year of 2022 for progressive to be a stronger church. Now, let me pause long enough to remind you that I am not inferring that we are a weak church. I am not inferring that we are not a church that's doing great things from God. But what I am saying is no matter where we are, we can always be better. No matter how strong you are, you can always be stronger. And so we should never be satisfied with what we did last year. We should never be satisfied with what we did last month. We should never be satisfied with what we did last week. But we should always be like like the song we just sang we ought to always be moving forward uh, because the God that we serve is a God that is a progressive God he is a God that is always moving forward uh, and so as a people we ought to be moving forward we ought to be moving forward in our faith uh, we ought to be moving forward in our work and we ought to be moving forward in our walk uh, and so if we're going to be moving forward we got to commend ourselves to being a stronger church uh, but if we're going to be a stronger church church we need to understand what makes stronger churches uh, give me a few moments of your time so I can remind you that stronger churches are not made by its ministries uh, stronger churches are not made by its leadership uh, stronger churches are not made by its worship uh, no stronger churches are made by its members uh, if the church is going to be stronger then we as individuals must be stronger in our faith uh, if the church is going to be stronger we who are the body of baptized believers of the progressive family uh, have to be a stronger individual in our own walk. Uh, can I work with that just a little bit? Yes. 
You see, you need to understand that in order to be a stronger member, there's three things that you need to do. Uh, the first thing you have to do if you're going to be stronger is that you got to be connected. Uh, can I preach the way I feel in the house? Uh, one of the problems in the modern church uh, is the church is not as connected as they used to be. Uh, everybody wants to go their own way. They want to do their own thing, uh, and they only serve the Lord when it's convenient. Uh, but I stopped by to remind you this Sunday morning uh, that if we're going to be a strong church, then we got to be a connected church. Uh, let me give you two things you got to be connected to. Uh, first of all, you got to be connected to your God. Uh, I feel like preaching right about now. The problem that we have is we're not really connected to our God. We just want some stuff from our God. Uh, we want God to bless my going out uh, and bless my coming in. Uh, but if you really want to be blessed by God, uh, you got to be connected to God. Uh, Jesus says, I am the true vine uh, and you are the branch. Uh, if we are the branch of the vine, uh, then we're connected to the vine. Uh, if we're connected to the vine, uh, the power that flows through the vine uh, flows through the branch. Uh, the power that's in Jesus uh, flows in you. Uh, the purpose of the vine uh, is the purpose of the branch. Uh, the purpose that Jesus has uh, is the purpose you live by. Uh, we've got to be connected uh, to the God that we love. And not connected to the stuff that we love from God. Secondly, if we're going to be connected, not only must we be connected to God, but we must be connected to the fellowship. Help me, Holy Ghost in the house. You see, we live in a society that's caused us to be a group of individuals uh, and everybody wants to feel like it's all about them. Uh, but baby, when you get into the body of Christ, uh, you'll find out very quickly it's not a me thing, but it's a we thing. Uh, you'll find out very quickly it's not about I, but it's all about us. Uh, and when you realize that I can't survive without you uh, and you are just a little bit better because of me, uh, it allows us to be a little bit more connected in the body of Christ. Uh, I'm so glad the Apostle Paul gave the analogy to this very same church uh, that we are many members of one body uh, and the whole body is not the same part. Uh, somebody got to sing the song. Uh, somebody's got to pray the prayer. Somebody's got to mop the floor. Somebody's got to usher them in. Uh, somebody's got to count the money. Uh, somebody's got to make folk feel welcome. Uh, somebody got to preach the word. Uh, somebody got to cut the grass. Uh, we are connected uh, and we make the whole thing better. Can I preach it a little bit further? Somebody got to carry the gospel. Uh, somebody got to make a way. Uh, somebody got to be a hand of help. Uh, we are connected to each other. And when we learn to be connected, uh, the grass cutter uh, helps the singer. Uh, the singer uh, helps the finance team. Uh, the finance uh, help the preacher. Uh, the preacher uh, help the mission. Uh, when we are connected, uh, I can't lay down my work because uh, my work helps your work. If we're going to be stronger, we got to be more connected. Secondly, if we're going to be stronger, we got to be consecrated. Help me, Holy Ghost, in the house. You see, we can't live any kind of way and think we're going to serve God effectively. Have any of you ever had a hoopty? In case you don't know what a hoopty is, a hoopty is just a raggedy automobile uh, that you held, held together with duct tape and hope. Uh, see, I've been broke a long time, uh, and I've had some hoopties in my life. Uh, and when you have a hoopty, uh, you don't always have the best batteries uh, or the best battery cable. Uh, and sometimes the cable gets some corrosion on it. Uh, and you go to start your car, uh, and the car won't start uh, because of the junk uh, and the corrosion on the cable and the battery. Uh, well, that's what a bad Christian life looks like. Uh, you've got power on the inside. But you can't access the power because of the corrosion of sin. But I've learned that if I'm going to be stronger, I got to be consecrated to the great I am. I got to be cleaned up that God can use me. I got to be connected that God can touch me. I got to be separated that God can orchestrate my life. If we're going to be stronger, we got to be consecrated to the work of God. Consecration means I'm set apart for his purpose. Consecration means I'm set apart for his glory. Consecration 
means I'm set apart uh, for his work. You see, the problem that we have uh, is we don't have enough consecration in the household of faith. Uh, can, I, can I say what I was really thought? We have too much constipation in the church. Folk not moving because they're bound up by stuff that's hindering them. By folk blocking things that God wants to do in their life because of a lack of faith. Uh, but I stopped by to remind you, uh, we got to be like the old song. Uh, Consecrate me now uh, in thy service, Lord. Uh, if God consecrates you, uh, God can do great things through you. Thirdly, if we're going to be a stronger church, not only must we be connected, not only must we be consecrated, but we got to be committed. Help me, Holy Ghost, in the house. If we are going to be effective in the kingdom, then you got to understand that this is no part-time walk. I can't pick up my faith when I need something from God. I can't just walk by faith when everything is going right in my life. I can't just exercise my faith when I can see what the end is going to be. But when I am understanding that I've got to be stronger for the Lord, I got to be more committed today than I was on yesterday. I got to recognize that I'll be like the Apostle Paul, that since nothing can separate me from the love of God, then I will not allow anything to hinder my walk with God. I'm not going to let money get in my way. I'm not going to let struggles get in my way. Can I preach the way I feel? I'm not going to let convenience get in my way. The problem with today's church is we are a convenient church. We want to serve the Lord when I feel like it. We want to serve the Lord when the sun is shining. We want to serve the Lord when everything is right. But baby, what happens when things go wrong? What happens when you have that rainy day? What happens when you have some aches and pains? God is still good anyhow how and he deserves my praise therefore i am committed to the work of the cross unto death i am committed to the cause of christ till he called me home i am committed to what god has in the midst of my circumstances we gotta press through that we can press on we have to understand that if we're going to be stronger, then we got to be committed, consecrated, and connected. Well, I want you to understand when we talk about uh, being a stronger church, uh, then you got to realize uh, that stronger does not come from the outside in. Uh, stronger comes from the inside out. And Paul begins to talk uh, to a very gifted and talented church uh, about being stronger in their walk with the Lord. Uh, oftentimes when we read this passage of 1 Corinthians, uh, we limit it to the communion table. Uh, but let me pause long enough to tell you uh, there's no greater spot to be uh, to talk about connection, uh, commitment, and consecration uh, than at the communion table. Uh, there's no greater place uh, to look at who I am in God uh, than at the communion table. Uh, there's there's no greater spot uh, to talk about how we're linked to each other than at the communion table because the communion table uh, first of all tells me three things the first thing the table is is that the table speaks to the memorial of Jesus Christ's sacrifice if nothing connects you the sacrifice of Jesus ought to connect you if nothing makes you appreciate who God is, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus ought to make you appreciate it. If nothing reminds you just how much God loves you, uh, this table often reminds you. Uh, he gathered them together uh, and he reminded the disciples as he was about to leave here, uh, as he instituted the Lord's Supper, he said, this bread is my body. Uh, take and eat uh, and this do in remembrance of me. Uh, we got to understand uh, that we got to live out uh, the Christian mandate. Uh, if I'm connected to him his word is my life his will is my way his purpose is my walk if I have the body of Christ in me and I'm a part of the body of Christ the table reminds me that I got to live the way he called me to live it's a memorial of the sacrifice 
he said the cup is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins and when you drink it uh, drink all of it and this do in remembrance of me uh, you got to remember that when we come to the table uh, we're reminded that the only reason why we're connected to God uh, is because Jesus looked down uh, and recognized our sinfulness uh, looked down uh, and saw our wretchedness uh, looked down uh, and saw our need uh, and bled uh, that we might live uh, allowed his blood to flow uh, that my sins might be washed away uh, and I don't know about you uh, I'm so glad uh, that when I look at the table uh, I remember what he did the table is a statement of unity because oftentimes when you sit at the dinner table what you're really saying is I am connected to the people at the table with me we share the same life need and we share the same life sustenance uh, we share the same life force uh, because the table is a place of commonality uh, well the communion table reminds us uh, that we are not only connected to our God uh, but we are connected to each other uh, when we sit at the table uh, the table reminds us that we are a unified body uh, the table reminds us uh, that you are a part of me and I am a part of you uh, the table reminds us uh, that I can only go as far uh, up uh, as I I'm willing to take you uh, and so when we think about the table uh, the table is a place uh, where we get stronger uh, Paul is trying to tell the church uh, that you gotta get stronger uh, because of your connection to God uh, and your connection to each other but there's one more thing uh, before I deal with my text the text implies that in order to be stronger there must be the table is a place of preparation Help me, Holy Ghost, in the house. You see, one of the problems that we have uh, is all too often people don't realize uh, the preparation it takes uh, to gather around the table of communion. Uh, and Paul reminded the church uh, that the reason why there's so much struggle and illness in the church at Corinth uh, is because people are gathering around the table uh, and they are not connected uh, and they're not prepared. Uh, they're gathered around the table uh, with sin in their life. They're gathered around the table uh, with, this, with, with division in their life. Uh, they're gathered around the table uh, with mess in their life uh, and because you're not prepared uh, God is not allowing the church to blossom uh, well I stopped by to remind you uh, that in the text that the Lord gave me uh, to preach this Sunday morning uh, he said the church has to be the prepared church uh, but in order to be prepared uh, to be a stronger people uh, you can't look outward uh, you gotta look in well can I preach the way I feel uh, before you can get stronger uh, you can't even look upward uh, until you look inward uh, he said let a man examine himself uh, in other words uh, don't look on the outside uh, you got to look on the inside can I tell you what we're good at Amen. we're good at looking at the issues of other folk but other people won't make you stronger Amen. only looking at yourself will make you stronger Amen. we're good at looking at the moat in our brother's eye and we got a big old plank in our own eye. Well, I stopped by to remind you, Paul says, if you want to be a stronger church, uh, then you have to look inward. Uh, well, let me give you three more things and I will let you go home. Uh, grooms, if I'm going to look inward, uh, what should I be looking at? Uh, if I'm going to look inward, uh, what should be my focal point? Uh, if I'm going to look inward, uh, where is the Lord directing me? Uh, well, there's three things as you look inward uh, and we're going home. Uh, when I look inward, uh, the first thing I need to look at uh, is my activity. You see, we're so concerned about what other folk do and we're not paying attention to what we do. Amen lights in here. We're so concerned about what the folk in the streets are doing. But are you concerned uh, about you living out the Christian mandate? Uh, we're so concerned uh, about what other folk are doing in the church. Uh, but are you concerned uh, about what you're doing in the church? Uh, we're so concerned uh, about who won't show up for prayer. Uh, but baby, are you showing up for prayer? Uh, we're so concerned uh, about who won't show up for Bible study. Uh, but baby, uh, are you living out the principles uh, that the Bible teaches? Uh, if we're going to look inward, uh, then I can't look at your footsteps. Uh, I got to look at my footsteps. Uh, if I'm going to look inward, uh, I can't look at your actions. Uh, I got to look at my actions. Uh, if we're going to look inward, uh, I can't look at your life. Uh, I got to look at my life. Uh, and does my life uh, line up with the word? Uh, does my actions uh, line up with the mandate?
afraid uh, if we're gonna stroke stronger uh, then I gotta look inward I gotta examine myself and look at what I'm really doing not what folks think I'm doing not what folks see me doing but what am I really doing secondly you got to go deeper because not only if I'm looking inward do I look at my actions and my activity but then I got to look at my motive Whew. help me Holy Ghost in the house you see, one of the problems that we have is we have forgotten that our God is not just a God of activity. He's a God of motive. Uh, baby, you can do a million things right, but if you do them for the wrong reason, uh, God will not bless you. Uh, but you could do one thing right uh, and do it for the right reason, uh, and God will bless your work exponentially. Uh, and so after I look at my actions, uh, I got to look a little bit deeper uh, and go into my heart uh, and look at my motives. Uh, am I showing up uh, just so people can see me uh, or am I showing up uh, because I love the Lord uh, am I coming to church uh, just to check a box uh, or am I coming to church uh, because I want to tell God uh, how much I appreciate you uh, do I show up in prayer uh, just to have an activity uh, or am I praying uh, because I want to connect to God uh, on the behalf of the people I'm praying for uh, I'm so glad that the God that I serve does not care about just your actions uh, he want to know why you do uh, what you do uh, and can I say what Paul says uh, if I do anything uh, and it's not out of love uh, I'm just wasting my time uh, if I preach uh, and it's not out of love uh, I'm just wasting my time uh, if I sing uh, and it's not out of love uh, I'm just wasting my time uh, God wants you to love uh, what you do uh, love uh, who you do it with uh, love uh, why you do it uh, when I look inward uh, make sure my motive is prompted by love you got to look inward let a man examine himself am I living the way God wants me to live am I inspired by what God wants to inspire me but can I take you another step you got to go even deeper you got to look beyond your actions you got to look beyond your motives and you got to go into that spot where God has reserved for himself. You got to go into that secret place where you realize that it is a hole in my soul. You got to look inward. You got to go so deep uh, until you recognize that there is a spot that I can't fill uh, with anything in this world. Uh, I tried it with everything uh, and nothing seemed to fill it. Uh, I tried it with lascivious living uh, and that did not fill it. Uh, I tried it with the accolades of people uh, and that did not fill it. Uh, I tried that with the education uh, and that did not fill it. Uh, you got to look deeper uh, into your soul uh, and look at that place uh, where God met you. Uh, can I tell you where God met you? Uh, God God did not meet you uh, in the midst of your perfection. Uh, God did not meet you uh, on the high mountains of Atlas. Uh, God did not meet you uh, when you had your glad rags on. Uh, God saw your emptiness. Uh, God saw your wickedness. Uh, God saw your wretchedness. Uh, God saw your loneliness. Uh, God saw your brokenness. Uh, and God looked down uh, in the place that only he could fill. Uh, and because God loved you, uh, he stepped into that empty place uh, because God desired to do a work at you uh, he stepped into that lonely place uh, because the God desired uh, to do a new thing in you uh, he stepped into that place uh, that was void of everything uh, I'm so glad when I look on the inside uh, I look down uh, and see where God met me uh, in the depths of my soul uh, and then something on the inside uh, bubbles up on the outside uh, you ought to give God praise Sometimes, in order to grow stronger, you got to go deeper. Stop being a surface Christian and go deeper. Stop being satisfied with status quo and go deeper. Examine yourself. Look at what you're doing. Ask yourself, why am I doing it? And then go to the place where God met you. And watch the Holy Ghost make you stronger than you ever thought you could be not for your pleasure 
but for his glory. Not for the accolades of men, but for the righteous crown that he has. Custom fit for your head. Can I give you a freebie? When God designs these crowns, he knows the exact dimensions that will fit only you. And my crown will not fit your head and your crown will not fit my head. And when I get the glory, I want the crowns that God has for me. But as a pastor, I want to see you receive the crowns that God has for you. And the only way that you're going to get those crowns is that you go deeper and that you look inward. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.